Hello, it's Rob Watson. Uh, it's Friday the 26th of June um, and it's a lovely summer's day here in Leicester um, and uh, what I thought I wanted to kind of get off my chest uh, today is, uh, don't worry it's nothing indignant, it's, um, it's more kind of passing thoughts as ever, which is the idea of how we um, make our spaces around us, our urban areas, the places where we live, uh, nice places to be for themselves. Uh, so what's prompted my thinking about this is I'm not really planning on going on a holiday this year, um, can't afford to do that, uh, but also the, the effort of travelling uh, doesn't seem appropriate at this, this moment and uh, I'd like to spend some time here in Leicester, um, kind of just relaxing and enjoying myself and kind of uh, making the most of the summer and you know on a good day and we might not get as many of them as we'd wish for uh, you know the British uh, countryside and um, can be can be fantastic um, but too often I think we're our expectation is that we drive have to drive around somewhere or visit somewhere or go somewhere just to um, uh, be somewhere else whereas in actual fact uh, it might be better if we can stay in one place and I think one of the challenges at the moment and I'm wondering whether this is something that people will uh, start to pick up on is uh, if you're not allowed to drive anywhere or, or, or not encouraged to visit places then um, you have to make the most of the place where you are and that then means that you have to look around you and see what that place is like uh, and what's going on and, and what the facilities are and what the kind of space is like and how we can use it. And unfortunately, I think a lot of the time uh, in the UK, we don't focus on that. There's an escape. So there's a guy over there uh, doing the bins. Uh, so it's making quite a bit of noise. Um, so, you know, what do we do? Uh, do we uh, stay in one place? Do we... Um, move about um, do we make the most of the space that's around us uh, so we we'll look we you know last the last one of these videos i was talking about the idea of traffic calming in leicester and it's starting to come in starting to make a difference um, and it kind of we need to have some conversations to think about what it means to be relaxed in your neighborhood and to be able to use that space recreationally and not just to somewhere like a dormitory and a car park uh, but something where you can actually just sit down and uh, um, be part of a social landscape uh, where you can interact with other people in a physically distant way um, but you're not um, you're not in under any hassle to kind of suddenly pick up and go elsewhere uh, you can enjoy the space around you. So I've been capturing a little bit of video, uh, some photos of things that are actually very nice in Leicester. Uh, Leicester uh, has the potential to be a very pleasant city, a very pleasant space. Uh, but for a lot of the time, it's crowded out by traffic, it's crowded out by commercialism. Uh, it's kind of, it's got its past as an industrial uh, center and not as a space that people use recreationally in itself, although that is definitely changing. And I think we'll see an acceleration of that. So, you know, what does it mean for our neighborhoods to be uh, welcoming, uh, safe, um, pleasant places? Uh, I suppose I've reached the stage in my life where I'm thinking, you know, actually I, I kind of get excited by seeing nice flower beds which I never thought I would do, you know, kind of go back 30 years and you kind of, you, you, you don't ever think that that's the kind of thing that you like. Uh, but as you get a bit, a bit older, you have an appreciation for that. And also there's some fantastic uh, nature within Leicester. So you have uh, the River Saw, which runs through uh, the heart of Leicester, the centre of Leicester. And either side, you've got Aylston Meadows and you've got um, uh, uh, Syston, uh, area and there's nature reserves um, and you don't have to drive to them they're in uh, uh, you can cycle to them uh, they're very accessible and they're very pleasant places to just be and 
maybe one of the things, it's a bit like, I always use the analogy when you start cleaning a car and you clean a small area of it and then you suddenly realise that the rest of the car is, uh, is very dirty as well. And we're probably going to go through a period of time and I don't know how long it lasts and what the effects of it will be where we start to notice, you know, we, we clean one aspect up and we start to notice the grubbiness or we, we, we fix one thing and make it more social and we start to realise that there are other things which are antisocial. Uh, I have a list which is, you know, noise. Noise pollution for me is one of the big issues uh, and one of the most important issues actually because it's often pushed aside. For me, things like part of the problem with aggressive driving isn't just the fact that the car moves very fast, that's very dangerous, but it's the noise that it creates. Uh, drunkenness in the streets is the noise that's created. Uh, amplification, people playing, uh, uh, you know, the idea of having open music in a public space, as long as it's not amplified, uh, because you ha and sitting in cafes and bars uh, with noise, with lots of amplified music, uh, goes against the kind of um, calmer, quieter instincts and pleasantness that I think we maybe uh, will grow to enjoy. So there's a, a, a discussion, uh, the regulations for when the pubs and bars open uh, are that they shouldn't play loud music because when people have to raise their voices to talk and they get louder and louder, um, then you've got more uh, potential to transmit uh, the virus through uh, 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 spittle and and your breath. Uh, so the idea is that bars and restaurants have to play music at a very low level so that you don't have to raise your voice. I think that has the potential to turn you know, British people's expectations of civility and sociability on their head. Uh, you know, you can go to many other places in Europe and they're nowhere near as loud and boisterous and noisy as they are in the UK. We have an addiction to volume. Um, in the UK, things have to be loud and to just sit quietly in spaces that aren't um, attacking the senses, in public spaces that aren't loud, noisy uh, places is, is, is going to be a challenge for people to think through. But that's, that's maybe me uh, having, having a rose tinted view uh, of the world. Anyway, I'm going to kind of try and capture some, some more uh, uh, pleasant images. I'm not going to suggest that they're in any way edited together in this uh, vlog and these vlogs in the future in any kind of, you know, expert way. I'm just fumbling my way through thinking about how uh, to, to do these on an irregular basis and to, uh, to just kind of spend some time thinking through uh, you know, what we're going to do and start a process of having conversations about maybe where we take things in the future. Uh, but until next time, oh, if you want to follow me, I'm on Twitter, uh, Rob W Media, on Instagram at Rob W Media, and um, I have a website which is Rob W. Uh, RobWatsonMedia.net. That's the name of the website. Uh, so until next time, uh, stay safe. Uh, don't head to any beaches and sit with thousands of people because you're going to spread uh, the virus and we might have to lock everything down again. Um, so, you know, do your best. <laughs>